Okay. First of all, first of all, we like to say all praises be to Ahia in the name of Yeshaya. Uh, Warawa, which is and the Holy Spirit. This is a continuation of last week's lesson in which we went into uh, the resurrection and the judgment. And it leads us to what is going to happen in the wilderness. How will we how will we be judged? And I wanted to also touch on what is the new world after the judgment all right after the thousand year judgment so what we'll do first is pick up from where we left off and let's start at revelations the 20th chapter revelations 20 from last week speaking of the judgment And before we go into Revelations 20, I want to touch something real quick uh, of importance. Uh, hold Revelations 20 and let's get Revelation 7 real quick. Revelation 7 and then we'll pick up. Go ahead. Revelations chapter 7, verse 1. And after these things, I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth. After these things, I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth. Holding the four winds of the earth, that the wind should not blow on the earth, nor on the sea, nor on any tree. Go ahead. And I saw another angel ascending from the east having the seal of the living power. And he cried with a loud voice to the four angels, to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea. Say, hurt not the earth, neither the sea, nor the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our power in their foreheads. So it told the four archangels, do not hurt the earth or the sea until the servants are sealed. Now when it says, uh, to the angels not to hurt to see it's saying that originally you have to know that they are holding the four winds they are holding the destruction that's in the power of Abaddon or Apollyon or Satan to destroy the earth they're holding it all so the Most High is letting us know that at this point the angels will stop holding back that destruction and allow it to go on on the earth okay will allow those seals to be broken in which Satan will begin to destroy the waters, destroy the people, on and on and on. Uh, release the demons like locusts on the people like you see in the earth today. High level demon possession like we were speaking of when we were talking about the truth, con the truth behind this so-called zombie apocalypse. That now Satan have now began his total uh, destruction of the Most High's earth. Why? Because the angels did what? They stopped holding back the four winds. At one point, they held it back until the Most High said, Okay, you can release it now. And now that the angels are not stopping Satan, Satan is doing everything he can to destroy the earth. And eventually, the earth will be utterly destroyed. But he said, Hold back until what? And I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living power. Go ahead. And he cried with a loud voice to the four angels, to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea, saying, Hurt not the earth, neither the sea, nor the trees. Go ahead. Till we have sealed the servants of our power in their foreheads. Until the servants are sealed. Now, let's see what that seal is. Let's go to Revelations and sow the seal of the Most High's name. Revelations chapter 14, verse 1. 
So we know that this seal is through the Holy Spirit. But with this, the 144,000 would be sealed with a particular name. Listen to this clearly. Revelations chapter 14, verse 1. And I looked, and lo, a lamb stood on the Mount Zion, and with him an 144,000, having his father's name written in their foreheads. Read it again. And I looked, and lo, a lamb stood on the Mount Zion, and with him an 144,000, having his father's name written in their foreheads. Now what does that tell us about the 144,000? Is the 144,000 trying to figure out the Most High's name? So one seal is that the 144,000 know the Most High's name. And that would be common sense. Before he freed Moses, he gave his name to Moses for the children of Israel. By the same token, the 144,000 or the elect at the very end that will be one in the people would have the seal of the name in their foreheads. They, they will know who the Most High is. Now the problem is, Satan has sealed his name through the Zionist, through the synagogue of Satan, and have taught the world after having our records that Yahweh or Baal is God see that so we know the 144,000 would not be deceived see that and we know the 144,000 learned after who the 12 disciples so the 12 disciples had the seal of the name of the Most High they knew the Most High so did our Lord and Savior so that's key to know that the 144,000 will not be, they would not ever call on Baal. Okay, and I'm putting that out there again because so many people are trying to use uh, uh, certain so-called archaeology claiming that it's because the name Yahweh is written everywhere, it must be the name. Not understanding or knowing the infiltrators who have revealed the information to you who have taken our records and scribed their God's name in our records and told you that this is the evidence uh, that should be presented for the Most High. The truth is real. The, the, uh, the scriptures are real. The precepts are real. But the God that they are ascribing to, and I'm talking about the, uh, the Jewish powers, is Baal, Yahweh, another name for him in the English, Jehovah. Right, And I'm saying that is because we can't purposely call on another God and claim that we're serving the Most High. It's one thing in the past when we were in our ignorance and did not know. We knew no better. We didn't know better. And, and what I would like to drive home is when it comes to the name of the Most High. You have so many people who try to explain off what the Most High said with his own mouth. And I, I will never get that argument in my life. How you need an hour video to break down what the Most High said. And it's in the Hebrew exactly what he said. It's in the Hebrew. Somebody pass me that tour real quick. I think I have one here. I have one right here. A Hebrew Tanakh. So the 144,000 is not going to say, well, this is the Most High's name, but I'm going to tell you what it means, and we're going to call him what it means. Which is further deception. Why? Because the Most High, the highest power, okay, he need to be reverenced for how he present, presented himself to his people. We can't say we know him and don't know his name. Okay, I, I want to make that clear. And then I'll get right into the lesson here. But it's linking all together. Read that part again. Revelations chapter 14, verse 1. And I looked, and lo, 
a lamb stood on the Mount Zion, and with them an hundred and forty and four thousand, having his father's name written in their foreheads. So we know that the hundred and forty four thousand have the name of the Most High written in their foreheads, and Revelation 7 tell us that the 144,000 will have a seal. Okay? Now, we know that the Jewish powers that are worshiping Yahweh in Israel right now, who don't even believe in Christ, you're going to tell me they got the seal of the living God in their forehead? They're the ones that gave you Yahweh. Or Yahweh, or whichever way you would like to pronounce the Lord or God of wickedness. When I look at Exodus 3, it says here, Al Masha Ahaya Asha Ahaya, where it says his name. That's there in the English and in the Hebrew. Let's see if I can hold it still. See that? That's Ahaya, Asha, Ahaya. And you see it right here. Crystal clear. And it's deep because it's in a Jewish Tanakh, but they will never tell you. All the other places they switched it. I want you to hone in on this so it'll be there too, okay? You have it? You got it? What? So we know that the 144,000 will, will know the Most High's name. And I'm saying this because so many people out there, we even have someone who want to invite us on a radio show to, di to have a discussion with other Israelites concerning the Most High's name. Which is, which is utterly, utterly ridiculous. Why can't we just call him what he said, call him? Why do we have to have a dialogue to where someone will make a, a dialogue of the Most High's name an argument to show a division amongst brethren as the key point emphasis to say, well, if they're confused concerning the Most High's name, then we might as well call on Jesus then. Why should we be pulled into that type of meeting when, when the argument is futile? What did the Most High say? He said, Ahaya, Asha, Ahaya. That's what he told Moses. And I don't care what type of argument or debate you can put on a table to say, well, what does that mean? The Most High didn't tell Moses to tell Israel, give Israel the meaning of my name. Okay? He made it clear. I am that I am. He did not say, I need you to tell them the meaning of my name, and that's my name. Okay? And I'm putting it out there because they want to invite us on these shows so we can debate the Most High's name. When all they have to do is go, and that's the hard-headedness and stiff neck and rebellious, the rebellious, rebelliousness of our people. It can be right there in their face, and they'll just hold on to something just because they don't want to be wrong. Instead of just saying, okay, that's the Most High's name, they'd rather debate. Okay? Another thing real quick, uh, let me grab that book real quick. The Illuminati 2. It's over there. Oh, I think I have this too. For those who didn't see this before, I just want to put that out there. By Henry Malkow, Illuminati 2. A matter of fact, I think you sent us this, right, Shumi? Illuminati 2, this book was sent to us, and in the book, it, it, it's, it's utterly ridiculous because in the book it